Intercultural Encounters Why do people from different cultures sometimes have misunderstandings or conflicts? Because they can interpret the same thing differently. Some behaviors that are polite in one culture can seem rude in another culture. Clothing that is very nice in one cultural context can be entirely inappropriate in another. People from any two cultures should be able to make the same observations about someone's behavior or clothing, but their interpretations of them could be very different. This is because they attach different cultural meanings to what they observe. Cultural meaning is symbolic. We do not see events and objects just for what they are. We attach symbolic meaning to it. For example, instead of simply seeing clothing of a particular color and style, we can interpret it to indicate that a person is a policeman or a baker. These professionals' uniforms have symbolic meaning to all who know how to interpret them. Gestures and actions take on symbolic meaning when interpreted through a cultural lens. Greetings, for example, vary widely from culture to culture. How should you greet a particular person? Do you shake hands, wave, give a kiss on the cheek? Is a hug appropriate? Do you bow? The rules vary widely around the world. Interculturally competent people will adjust their behavior according to the context they find themselves in. Greetings are fairly formulaic. The right way to greet different kinds of people can usually be described in a few rules. Other cultural differences are more general and are the result of differences in values. One such difference is the difference between what are called high context and low context cultures. High context cultures are ones where the members of those cultures share a lot of context in common. From one member of a high context society to another, there is a lot they can assume they have in common. Most cultures in Latin America, the Middle East, and Asia are considered high context cultures. When they communicate, they use the full context to understand a message. It's not just the words that matter, but also how the words are said and in what context. They assume a shared understanding. This means that many things may be left unsaid. In a low context culture, like the United States, messages are made explicit through words. Speakers do not leave key parts of the message unsaid, and what is said is interpreted more literally. That is one axis along which cultural differences are described. Today, we will look at two more. The next one concerns cultural attitudes towards time. The two extremes are called monochronic and polychronic. In monochronic cultures, such as in North America and Northern Europe, time is viewed as linear. People prefer to do only one thing at a time, schedules are not flexible, and time is considered a valuable commodity. In fact, a common saying is, time is money. Let's look at what a meeting would look like in a monochronic culture. There will be an agenda. The first agenda item will be dealt with first. During that time, people will only talk about that item and should not bring up topics related to other agenda items. When an agenda item is finished, the topic will be left behind and people should not return to that topic during the meeting. If any of these rules are broken, members of the meeting may feel like the rule breaker is wasting their time. People from polychronic cultures in much of the Middle East, 
Latin America, and Sub-Saharan Africa, will tend towards opposite behaviors. They focus on tasks, not schedules. If a task takes a little bit longer, they prefer to stay with the task and give it the time it needs. They are more likely to multitask. For them, mixing personal activities and work activities is not a problem. The last major cultural difference that we will look at today is collectivism versus individualism. In a collectivist society, your strongest identity is with the group you belong to. Your individual identity is less important. This group may be your family, your workplace, or your national identity. If the group's needs conflict with your individual needs, you will be expected to sacrifice or give up your individual needs for the group. In collectivist societies, long-term relationships built on trust are very important. People in individualistic societies are the opposite. They will be willing to sacrifice personal relationships if that is necessary for personal gain. Because of this, relationships outside of their nuclear family are less important. Written contracts in these societies are very important documents for defining relationships between many people. Based on this description, what cultures do you think are collectivist and which are individualistic? You are encouraged to read more about this by doing some research on the internet. It can be very useful to understand these differences in motivations and values that are generally true between certain cultures. But an important word here is generally. These generalities help us understand people's motivations, but we must be careful not to overgeneralize about people. People are always complex, and there are always differences among the members of any group of people. These cultural tendencies can help us understand people's motivations, but they should not lead us to stereotype them or view them in a simplistic way. Here is a list of references used in the writing of this script. And here are some additional articles that we suggest if you want to read more on this subject. These articles are open source and can be freely accessed.